I would share like how the SAP architecture is. So if you talk about the SAP architecture here, you are having your the important layer. The very important layer is, you know, the application server layer. Your all the uh, here you are having. Now, here you are having all the ABAP logic, whatever the logic if you want to perform, all the logic is going to run at this application server layer. Okay. And then you are having the database layer. Okay. Then you are having the database layer. That means where all your physical database, all your all your physical database uh, data gets stored. So in this database layer, you can have any kind of relational RDBMS. Okay. For example, you are having Oracle. You can have MySQL. Okay. Or you can have Sybase. Okay. You can have DB2, DB6. Okay. So any kind of DB can be here. And nowadays HANA is also there, which is a in-memory database so any kind of database it can be here <clears throat> so you understood database layer you understood the applications or server layer but how you will interact with all these things so you are going to interact with the applications server layer and our application server is going to interact with the database layer okay so uh, let me represent some face over here which will uh, represent the people we will represent the user so this is the user one this is the user two this is the user three this is the user four so we are having different different user which is going to have you know which is going to have the user id and password and with the help of user id and password they are going to log in into their sap gui software i will show you the sap gui software and that sap gui software is interacting with this application server so we can say that these are the presentation server in fact you know these are this these people represents the presentation server Okay, because they are going to interact with their local computer and local computer is having the SAP GUI software installed over there and that GUI represents the presentation server. So this one actually is your presentation server and this presentation server, you can mark it something like this. I'll just. So let me remove the filling and i will put it over here this is our application server uh, presentation server okay so this is your presentation server and this is how your uh architecture is so, so this total you are having this total is known as the r3 architecture okay so this presentation server is going to interact with this and the application server is going to interact with the database layer so this is your r3 architecture okay <clears throat> r3 architecture in this r3 architecture in your application server you are having again the different uh, component okay so one component the very important component is the work process okay <clears throat> i will discuss in detail about the work process so the important uh, component is your work process another important co co component is icm internet communication manager due to this it is possible to interact with the any http or https protocol means suppose if you are going to live any application on your internet right or on the cloud and if you want to integrate with the application server layer you know the icm this internet communication manager this component is going to help you over there this is the a component which is able to integrate the cloud and all apart from the gateway gateway is uh, you know like oh i'm talking about the o data gateway so it supports the communication between o data gateway and uh in the uh, internet based any application then work process what is this work process what is the use of this work process okay let me open a new slides and i will show you 
the importance of this work process suppose if you are a user okay suppose you are a user and here one more one more important thing like here you can see that these are the different different users you are having right and the application server is at one place so you can see one person is there in the america one person here in the india and here in somewhere in uh, for example nepal and all different different country person is representing you know uh, they are they are having the different machines and they are all the data is going to managed centrally in a single database and all the logic is going to manage at the single application server that's how your different functional modules is going to integrate okay though the different people are using their own system but at single place it is going to get integrated now what is work process what is the use of this so it's an important concept when you will be having kind of six or seven years of experience and when you will come on the architect level at that point of time it's going to help you a lot such kind of concept even the basic understanding of this work process concept is also important so let's understand in a brief what is this work process so work process is nothing but if you see the work process what happens that if you take any action on your system okay you are suppose if you are user and if you are going to take any action on the system for example any click on your sap uh, like sap gui software or uh, on a screen if you are going to take any action for example click on save button or click on any tab then what happens it has to perform some certain action right so that task is identified by a software called by a component called dispatcher okay that task is identified by a software called dispatcher and it is assigned to the different work processes based upon the type of the task for example for example suppose if you have given the command over there to save the data okay to, if you have to save the data you will the dispatcher will identify the task that it has to save the data and it will pick the particular work process in order to perform the particular task so we are having different kind of work processes okay we are having different kind of work processes so the very first work process that is the dialogue work process dialogue work process so this is the first work process through to which you are going to interact with for example i'm just going to show you i have already opened my sap system let me come over here and suppose if i'm going to uh, just let me i'm not able to do anything over here what happened just a second it got hanged so maybe i can close this one and i can up again open so let me try to open once again okay so fine now here you can see suppose if you are going some transaction over here for example you have to maintain the material so you have come into the material transaction over here you have given some material over here click on this okay button and suppose if you are going to click on the save button so who who performs this action who performs this action when you click on the save button you can see that it has been saved now okay but the thing is who performs this action it got saved who is saving this one right so the save and all any kind of action is accomplished by the help of you know by the help of work processes okay so if you are going to take any kind of action first so the user interaction the user interaction so if there you have seen that i have clicked on the save button that save that save action has been taken first by the dialogue work process okay so dispatcher assigns that because the dialogue means a user is clicking uh, on any button you know dialogue means user you can understand dialogue means user 
whatever user is going to take the action that particular action is going to received by the dialogue okay now if dispatcher determines that there is some operation need to be performed like save kind of operation or if there is just update function module kind of things right so we will see that update function module and all in detail okay in our coming session so there if something update kind of things is there then we are having the update work process this work process the dispatcher identifies the type of the task and assigns that particular task to this update work process then we are having you know suppose if you have given the print command okay so now the dispatcher identifies that you know it has to give the print so that print work process or fax kind of or email kind of process is picked by the spool work process asp double o l spool work process okay and if you see the another another work process you know another important work process suppose some task is need to be performed in batch or in background batch and background both is kind of in same same in same sense i'm using over here so let's make it simple suppose if something you want to perform in not in front end okay not in front end you want to perform in back end in background like if you want to schedule some job or something like that you know so any kind of background work process is picked by the background work process background uh, task is picked by the work background work process now the last work process what we are having is the very important work process which is responsible to uh, which is responsible for maintaining the integrity in the system and consistency into the system so this particular work process which i'm going to write it down its name is the nq work process which is responsible for maintaining the integrity into the system and consistency for example suppose if we are going to change the data record into a database table so in the same database two person should not be able to change the same record so first the locking mechanism should be applied over there on the first record and then once once the uh, first person is going to you know once the first person is going to change the particular record locking should be applied over there so that the other person should not be able to change the same record of the same table so that is possible with the help of nq work process nq work process okay so this is responsible for applying the you know uh, lock and removing the lock okay so this is all about the you know uh, uh, overall idea about the basic things now if you talk about the work process okay this session will be little you know theoretical so but it is important to understand this concept okay so the work process if you talk about the work process work process has been like uh, a person is having different different part right to perform their task hand is for eating right leg is for running and uh, for walking mouth is for eating so something like that work process is also having their different component okay so it is having three different component the first component is known as the screen processor so if you are going to take any action on the screen the screen processor receives that particular tasks and that task then pass to the you know then pass to the a bar processor okay then that so first uh, with the help of hand we take our food into the mouth and there the intestine helps us to you know uh, digest that in the same way a screen processor takes that task and it assigns to the where it assigns to the you know a bar processor where logic and code has been written so all the data is being taken with the help of a screen processor and passed to the ABAP processor 
and once a BAP processor manipulates the data and it identifies that some data need to be updated into the where into the database then there is one more component is having with the work processes that is known as a database abstraction interface abstraction interface very very important component is this actually you know that's with the help of this component itself the open sql came into the picture okay when i talk the open sql i will i will try to make you understand in coming session why i'm talking about the open sql uh, as of now i can simply tell it is open sql because the same sql query the same language is valid for any kind of database you don't have to bother about here if you were having the oracle database or mysql database or cybase database or db2 or db6 or hana or anything else you don't have to bother at all you have to use the same database language okay for all the database whatever the database you are having you don't have to bother about at all okay any kind of uh, database you can use and the language in which you are going to uh, interact with the database that is going to be the same because this database in, in uh, abstraction interface it converts the open sql into the native sql okay it converts the open sql into the native sql that means if it is a cybase database then it will convert into the native language of the cybase database if it is a oracle database then it will convert into the native language of the uh, oracle database similarly for another database native language of the uh, of the underlying database okay underlying db so this part is actually known as the database abstraction interface very very important so if you have to update anything or if you have to manipulate anything or if you have to create anything so any kind of interaction if you have to do this database abstraction interface carries that particular work so a screen processor you understood it takes the data from the screen and it pass to the abap logic the code and then code if realize that it has to interact with the database then it is going to use the database abstraction interface and it's going to communicate so this is your work process okay so this is your work process and it is having the different you know a different uh, component okay so if you have any question over here feel free to ask any question you can unmute at this point of time and you can ask any question if you have okay so this is our component or even you can put the message over here if you have any doubt. 